Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you the new feature which is destructible object for RPG Builder version 1.1. This is a very very cool feature which I'm sure you're going to find many ways to use. In this video I'm going to present it um, with the example of a door blocking the way or something. Um, as you can see here I'm in the demo scene and we have those walls and now this way is not really accessible for us anymore right so if I try to work there I can't really it's just a collider right um, if I you know try to click uh, those object nothing happened but if I do click this one you see that I'm actually targeting the door already now you can see that destructible objects are set up in a very very similar way than NPCs in RPG Builder um, in fact, they are actually using part of the RPG logic, so for the entire combat and everything. And this makes it very, very easy to use because we can use any kind of ability type. So, for example, if I even don't target the door, um, as you can see, I have now this fireball, which is, you know, like a projectile which does not require a target. As you can see, if I use it on the door, it is working just like it would on an NPC. And as you can see, it even applies the dots. So dots and everything, every effect like that will work just fine. Same for targeted abilities, AOEs, cons, all of that will work just fine. And as you can see, when it's reaching zero health, it's actually um, getting destroyed and we can now just you know, work through it. So um, pretty cool. And as you can see also, it's playing, of course, a destroyer animation and particle effect. So I'm going to go over um, this new feature and showing you how exactly it is set up. So first of all, so this destructible object, so for example, the door that was here, uh, was not actually instantiated or spawned um, in the game at runtime. This was just like any normal um, game object, right, placed in my scene. So this is making it very, very easy. It's just needing the right component on it for it to work, but it's it can be kind of like predefined in your scene. So this makes level design very easy. But on top of that, it can also be spawned and instantiated in game if you wanted to. So for example, if I will go ahead and drag and drop my door prefab here, which I, you know, have in my project. If I now go in game again, you can see that just like the previous door, it can be used um, right away or rather, you know, destroyed. So it's working perfectly. Now, when it comes to the component and how this prefab is set up, it does not even need to be a prefab, of course, but uh, making it a prefab just make it very easy to reuse. So I'm going to drag and drop one in the scene here. And on the right, we can look at the different uh, components. So I'm going to collide this a bit. Uh, collapse rather. So here, first component, we have a box collider. So this is, of course, um, what blocks us from going through it. So because of that, we can't go through the door, right? And we can only once it's destroyed. Then we have a combat node. Combat nodes, if you're familiar with RPG Builder in general, it is on every single one of your NPCs and your character prefab, but they have type. So we have mobs, players, pets, and in this case, it is an object. As you can notice here, it also has the NPC data field that your NPCs have. And that's what I'm going to show you in a bit. Um, under that, we have the mesh renderer target. So this is actually just for the nameplate. In this case, it's just one of the mesh inside it. Uh, if you don't even want to show the nameplate, then you don't even have to assign that. And we also have an animator because there is an animation playing when it's getting destroyed. Inside that, is no logic at all it's just the visual part so the mesh extra this can be anything you want any visual you want this destructible object to have now coming back to the npc part right so as you can see here we have the uh, door npc assigned to it so what this means is that if we go under combat npcs and find the door this door is going to use this data so for its stats um, and a lot of other things so i'm gonna go through it with you we don't need the prefab setup, we don't need the functions, but we do need the combat part. So first of all, destructible objects can have factions, yes. So it's, this is really amazing because it gives you um, full control on when this object can be destructed or not. Um, what I mean by this is, for example, you could have a player which starts with a specific faction, and maybe if he starts doing certain things, he can now destroy those objects or the other way around. At first, he can, and then by doing some quest or whatever, the faction is going up and he can't destroy those objects anymore. So I'm sure you're going to find use for that. Um, we also have the level minimum and maximum. So this is going to be used for the stat scaling. 
and the rest is not needed here. Now, coming to rewards, this destructible object can actually reward experience and as well as faction rewards, just like an NPC would. They can have blue tables, just like normal NPCs, and they can also use the stat override. So in this case, we see that um, I am setting up this door to have uh, 50 HP, but if I wanted it now to be 160, I can just go ahead, save, and the next time I'm going to drag and drop a door in the scene, as you can see, it will now have 160 health, as you can see here. And it will, of course, take uh, longer to destroy, right? So yeah, that's pretty much uh, it for the NPC part. And all you need to do is to drag and drop it or like um, assign it in the um, combat node component when you create your prefab or object. Now I'm going to destroy it. And you see that it's playing both an animation and particle prefab. So um, I'm going to show you that. I'm going to go back to the scene here. So we have our door. And as I said, it has an animator component on it, right? It doesn't need an avatar or anything, but if I double click the door animator, it is a very, very simple animator. So what I have here is just an empty node uh, here for this one, like the default state. So um, that, you know, when we don't need animation, it's just looping through this empty uh, state here. So it's not playing any animation. But what I have here is a dev parameter. It needs to be written that way. It's kept um, sensitive. So um, you need to just write it that way. And I have a state going from any state to the door destroyed animation. And here it's simply a, um, a parameter, you know, like of type dev. So that's it. Uh, when dev is set to trigger, um, in this case, I can actually show you in game. So for example, up. As you can see, it is going to play the animation. But as you can see, it also plays the particle. So how did this work, right? Um, it's quite simple. Here, like I said, once we trigger, so um, when the door reaches zero health, it is automatically going to trigger the death animation, which is going to play the death animation. But then if we select the door state here, um, we have the object action destroy trigger script. So I'm going to go out of play mode now. And I want to show you um, for this, you just have to, for example, let's create a new state. Let's say this one didn't exist yet. You will go here, add behavior, you could type the name, but it's actually going to show it to you um, the one available here. And if you uh, add this, it means that when this def animation is going to be played, you now have also the option to play um, the script. And in this case, here we have the door destroy, which is a um, prefab, particle prefab. So if I put this in the scene and show you, as you can see, this is exactly the particle played when the door is destroyed. So that's just a normal prefab with particles inside it. We have a particle offset. So this lets you choose how high from the object origin, uh, not only on how high actually, but like the full X, Y, and Z um, positions to offset. So for example, if you want it exactly as the origin, you would just go zero, 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 but I wanted it to be spawned at the middle of the door. So I kind of put it at one and destroy time is just, um, how long this particle prefab is going to stay in the scene, right? So in this case, after five seconds, it's destroyed because after five seconds, anyway, this is not visible anymore. So that's pretty much it. And now if I go to the demo scene, um, I can just show you here. So you see that here we don't have the door, for example, but here just in the scene, we're not in game right now. We have this door prefab. And uh, this is set up the exact way I said before. So that's pretty much all you need to do. You need to have an object with a visual, of course. I mean, it could be transparent if you wanted to, but in this case, it's a door. You need a collider. Uh, it could be a collider of any type, as long as it's 3D, of course. And the combat node set to type object. Make sure you have an NPC data assigned to it. The uh, mesh under reference, if you want the nameplate to be visible and an animator if you want an animation displayed. And if you want a particle played on destroy, you just need to add this. That's it. That's literally all you need to do now in RPG Builder 1.1 to have destructible object. And this could be used for some rocks that you destroy and then you can have, for example, uh, loot from it or whatever. It can be used for many, many different things. So that's pretty much all I wanted to cover. I hope you like it. And um, thank you for watching this video and see you in the next one.